so it's another Sunday. So we're gonna do story time again, and today I'm going to tell you about the completely ableist nightmare that was giving birth to my oldest son. <laughs> and uh, it, it was interesting because the labor process was completely normal. Like, I was just another woman there to give birth. It, it didn't occur to them until my son was visible that this blind lady was a mother. And then all of the nurses lost their shit. They wouldn't talk to me. They would only talk to Driving Ape or my mother, no matter what they said. They would like, talk to her. Oh no, but you, you need to know too so you can help her. Well, she isn't going to need much help because we're going to be working. She's going to be taking care of the baby most of the day. Talk to her. Oh, but how's she going to change a diaper? Well, how do you change a diaper? Or how many ways are there to change a fucking diaper? And they wouldn't talk to me. And the lactation consultant would not talk, like, would not talk to me. And 24 hours into him being alive, his latch wasn't good which is normal for a lot of mothers and and babies the latch is not good on the breast so instead of helping me with that the lactation consultant was like so when you go home and you can't breastfeed sorry there's a screaming child over there <clears throat> when you can't breastfeed you're gonna go to formula right and I'm like, well, I would hope that I would pump first before I completely gave up breast milk altogether, but I'm not gonna give up trying to breastfeed right away. Like I, it was like, it was so bad. And the, the, the night nurse for the first night, like my, my mother purposely wheeled the bassinet right next to the bed so I wouldn't have to walk far, right? Cause I had had an epidural, so she's like okay well let's make it so you don't have to walk far the nurse was like so do you need to call me when the baby cries so i can help you find the baby i'm like no it's right there i can touch the crib from here no i'm fine i'm not paralyzed i can walk i'm okay and then it was just on and on this no they would walk in and do the the checks and stuff but they wouldn't be like hi this is so and so i'm just here to check the baby because he had a bit of jaundice so he was under the uv lights and they were they would just show up and just start touching him and i'd be like who the fuck are you and why are you touching my kid oh we're just a nurse check like doing the checks well, do you think maybe you should have said something first? Just wander into my room. Just wander into the blind person's room, not say a damn thing, start touching the baby. Yeah, it's fine. It's totally cool. That won't, that won't elicit a response. And, <clears throat> and it got so bad that at one point they told me, you're not going home without a feeding plan because he wasn't latching and they weren't doing anything to help me latch. And I lost it. I f started crying because I was, I wanted to go home. It was three days in so far. He wasn't latching properly. So he was hungry. I was worried because they were pressuring me to go to formula and I didn't want to. They were an accredited breastfeeding hospital, by the way. They were just like, nope, formula. And my mom, at one point, pulled the lactation consultant aside and was like, so what do you think is easier? Breastfeeding for a blind person or trying to measure the correct amount of formula at two in the morning when you're tired and the baby is screaming for, for their food? Which, which do you think <laughs> it would be the easier choice, you moron? She didn't say you moron, but she really wanted to. Um, <clears throat> it was, 
it, it, so eventually when I was crying because they said you can't go home without a feeding plan, they then sent the social worker up because of my mental health history. So because I was crying because they were scaring me, I must be having a postpartum episode, you know. So here comes the social worker. Am I feeling like I'm going to hurt myself or the baby? They asked me. It's like, no, I just want to go home. You people think I can't take care of my child. I want to go home. You, like, all of this. And finally, we, like, I finally didn't. I was like, you guys, like, I lost it on the nurses. And I was like, you guys won't talk to me. You're only talking to my mother or my husband. You're acting like I'm not here. You wander into the room and touch my kid without saying anything. Your lactation consultant basically told me I can't breastfeed because I'm blind and wants me to go to formula feeding. And like, I have nothing against formula. I was formula fed, but like, I didn't want to do that. I, I was not in a financial position to do it. And if I could help it, I just didn't want to do it. And by the way, my, my aunt, who, who is a doula, she came down to help me breastfeed because I almost got a really bad mastitis because my milk came in and he just wasn't latching and nobody, like the lactation consultant in town was just, no, you, you go to formula. And it, it, was, it was the worst experience of my life and it was just because the nurses were completely untrained in how to handle a disabled person having a baby. It was just completely like, as soon as he was visible to them and it correlated in their brain that this blind woman was going to be in charge of an infant, they just broke, their, they broke because they were like, well, I couldn't do it, so she can't. And it was just awful. Luckily with the second one, the second, child we went in we're like we're here to have a child if there is nothing detrimentally wrong with the child we are going to go home afterwards okay <laughs> okay <laughs> it was it was but definitely if you're disabled and you are going to have a child um definitely have a strong support team with you like I did with my husband and my mother um, because you will be too tired to advocate for yourself because you will have just given birth to a child and that is exhausting and you will not want to advocate for yourself because all you will want to do is sleep and so it is very necessary to have a strong advocacy team with you if you're a disabled woman having a child. So I hope this video was a good story time and a good lesson and let, let me know what you think in the comments below and I'll see you tomorrow.